I bet you can't guess why I'm wearing this outfit and what I'm doing today. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. And today, you probably guessed already, is processing day. These grow outs are right at 12 weeks old. I could let them go a little bit longer, but I really need to get these guys processed. I've got a vacation coming up. I'm going to be out of town. The neighbor taking care of things. I don't want to leave them in here. Not only that, but at 12 weeks old, it's really time to start separating the males from the females. I just don't have the extra cage space right now. So it's, it's just time to get them processed. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, these two cages, there's 10 rabbits, no, nine rabbits, nine rabbits in all. And uh, that's it. We're going to get them processed. I'm going to get some quail processed too, but I don't think I'll get that done today. Uh, let me show you something though. I want to talk about like my filthy dough here. This may happen to you. Let me bring you over a little bit closer. We'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this is my dough, and she's actually in the process of cleaning herself up right now, which is good, because this is something I wanted to kind of talk about. Get her to move around a little. Come on, move around. There you go, over here. Look at her, just filthy, filthy. <laughs> and the reason for that is when I had all the grow outs in there, let me get down here where you can see me, there we go. When I had all the grow outs in here with her, you know, she's the mom of these, these babies over here, and when they were in there with her, they just crawled all over her all the time and she tolerated she just let them well in the process you know she's gotten pretty filthy um basically from their urine uh they just you know they don't really have any respect for her so they just urinated on her and stuff and she's gotten pretty filthy in that process now you may be tempted if you've got a rabbit like this to give him a bath it's it's not really necessary she will clean herself up and you kind of saw as i was coming over here she was cleaning herself she's going to end up it's getting close to winter time anyway so she's going to probably blow her summer coat grow in her winter coat and that will take care of all that filth there's really not much i have to do if you really wanted to you could get her out and uh you know and wash her off a little bit you know i would use some like warm water don't submerge her in water you want to put a little bit of water in a tub or something and uh just gently wash her off, but make sure she's completely dry before you go moving her back out to her cage. Again, I'm not gonna mess with it. Rabbits do a fantastic job of cleaning themselves, so there's not really anything that I need to do. It doesn't look good, it looks bad, but it's just a temporary thing. She'll take care of it herself. All right, so this is my processing setup. I've shown this before, but just talk through it again in case you're a new subscriber, you haven't seen it before, you got questions about it. Got a couple of two by fours right here that I've just used C clamps to clamp to my deck. And then I tied some uh, slip knots here and I'll be able to hang the rabbit from that right there. And uh, let's see, let me get that open back up so I don't forget to do it. Uh, not much else, a couple of bowls here to catch everything. Uh, you know, the rabbit's gonna go in one bowl. Uh, the extras, like I always save the ears, dehydrate them for the dog. He loves them, they're great dog treats. Um, I've got a hose here to you know spray things down with. This is uh, an old, um, wheelbarrow handle wheelbarrow handle somebody called me out for calling it a wheelbarrow to me that makes more sense than wheelbarrow but either way i'll try to get the word right now wheelbarrow handle and this is what i use for dispatching the rabbits i cannot show that on film because youtube i've got a, a video where i've done that before and it got flagged as adult content and and it's just YouTube's a little bit weird about how um, you show those kinds of things. So I can't show dispatching the rabbit on film, but it's a pretty simple process. Basically what you do is you set the rabbit on the ground, you put this over the back of his neck right there, put your foot on either side, so like this, grab his back feet and pull, and that dislocates the neck bone, and it's a pretty quick, almost instantaneous death. It's about the most humane way I've found. Um, if you don't like that, you could also use something like a high-powered pellet rifle, you know, shoot him, in the, shoot him in the head. I just seem, seem to think that this actually is quicker. Um, they seem to suffer less when I do it this way, so this is the way that I prefer to do it. And then basically I'll just hang the rabbit up here by his back feet, um, spray him down real good, and uh, you know, go ahead and process him. So again, I can't show all that on video, but uh, I don't know, maybe I can show some of it on video. I can't show the actual killing of the rabbit on video, but let's see if I can get away with showing how you actually process the rabbit once it's dead. So let me go get a rabbit, um, we'll get started. Okay, so we've got the first rabbit and he's a little bit wild right now. So I'm gonna set him down here and get him calm. And again, I can't show this part on video, so this will be cut out here, but I'm gonna let him get kind of calmed down a little bit. 
uh, so he's not quite so freaked out. And then that's pretty much it. The, uh, the board goes over the back of his head, step on either side, pull on the legs. This part I can't show, so let me get it done. All right, so this rabbit is dispatched now. Um, one thing I always do is try to uh, open up the throat and to uh, drain the blood out. It's always a little bit tricky to do. Make sure you have a sharp knife. There will be some nerves kicking. Uh, don't let that panic you. It's pretty normal. Okay, let that drain for just a minute. And then one thing I always like to do is take a hose and spray them down. That just seems to help a little bit with uh, keeping the fur from sticking to the meat too bad. So, and then, let's see, we'll take off the ears real quick so I don't forget to do that later. And then uh, these will just get laid out on a, uh, on a baking sheet, throw them in the oven, about 100 degrees, about the lowest temperature you can set them at, 12, 14 hours, something like that, until they're dry and crunchy. Make fantastic dog treats. The dog loves them. And then we just start at the feet. Make sure you have a sharp knife. It really helps. I need to sharpen mine, apparently. It's not as sharp as I thought it was. There we go. Now we're getting through there. And just be careful to cut only the skin, not the meat itself. If it starts to pull on the meat, which it didn't, but if it starts to pull on the meat, you can kind of fold the skin out, cut against the skin like that, and you'll, you'll release the skin from the meat. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, but again, having a uh, nice sharp knife really does help. And I always wear gloves when I'm doing this. Just keeps my hands a little bit cleaner. It's nicer. There we go. So pull that down. Work my fingers in between there. And then I will cut the fur like that so it opens it up. I turn it around. Pull the skin back as far as I can. Hopefully you can kind of see this on video. And then I'll just take the tail right off. Everything comes off with one fell swoop. And then it's just a matter of pulling the skin down as far as I can, work the legs out to about where the feet are. I've got a pair of pruners here. Make it really nice to cut through bone. Don't tear up your knife doing it. Broke that bone, now I can use the knife to cut through the rest of the way. Max, leave. Leave it. Go on. And then for the neck, I'm going to cut down to the bone. Sometimes the bone breaks completely, which it did here. I don't have to worry about cutting through it. Sometimes I actually have to cut through it with the, uh, with the pruners. I'm going to wash my knife off a little bit. All right, so now we start right here. And just be very careful that you get only, only the meat. You don't want to cut into the bowels or any of that kind of stuff when you're doing this. So I always put my fingers in there, kind of hold everything back so I can cut it open. And I'm going to cut it all the way down. Having a little bit of a tricky time. There we go. Start pulling things out. Now you've got a bladder right here. You want to be careful. You don't want to bust that bladder if you can help it. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Just wash things off well. It's fine. Everything gets pulled out basically. I always check the liver. Liver came out with this. And rabbit liver is good to eat. So if you like liver, save the liver. But of course you want to remove the, uh, the gallbladder there. If you're not familiar with what a gallbladder is, that's the gallbladder right there. You want to peel that off. And you can just grab it and, and pinch it and peel it off. I'm not going to bother saving these livers today. Um, I've got other things going on. Uh, but I always check it, make sure there's no white spots. This is a good, healthy looking liver. There's no nothing to worry about there. So. And for some reason, my nose always itches whenever I do this. Kidneys, 
gone. And then there's a little, there's a diaphragm right there, holds the lungs in. You can usually just grab that and pull it right out. Sometimes you may have to get a knife in there and do a little bit of knife work, but it usually comes right out. Max, leave it. Go on. There's the heart and the lung down inside there. Again, grab them, pull them out. And I'll take my knife and I'll go ahead and cut all the way down to the breastbone. And it's actually easier to cut through this breastbone if you go from the neck. There's a hole right there you can go through and you can cut right up through the center of that breastbone. It's a little bit easier. Oh, I messed it up a little bit, but you get it. Now it's opened all the way up. Now let's take care of this stuff at the top here. I've got a bladder right there. The, uh, I'm gonna cut that off, pinch it off and cut it off so it doesn't spill all over everything. Get it away from the rabbit and into the, uh, into the trash can. Probably a good idea to go ahead and wash everything off a little bit at this point. And then this is a female, so there's no genitalia here to cut off, um, but you still want to clean this up pretty good. There's a big fatty, I can't grab a hold of. There we go, got it. Usually it just pulls off, so no big deal. So we're going to cut female, male, either way, it works the same way. We're just going to cut right down the center here, open that up. You'll kind of feel that bone. You want to cut on either side of that, that pelvic bone right there. And then. Pop it open like that till it cracks. And then you just want to follow that pelvic bone inside and clean all that out. So let me get that done. We're going to cut on this side of the pelvic bone and then on this side of the pelvic bone. And then we should be able to just pull all that out. Oh, got a little bit of excess there. And then give them another good rinsing off. Found on the back of the shoulders. I always like to remove that. You can leave it on if you want to. And uh, that's about it. That rabbit is done. Cut right here at the ankles. Take the feet off. There we go, we got one rabbit done. Let me open these up a little bit. And we're ready for the next one. So um, let me go get all that done and then we'll come back and close this video out when I'm finished. All right, that's finished. Thank goodness, that is the, well, it's the worst part of raising your own animals is having to process them. It's not something that's fun to do. Always try to treat the animal with respect. I always try to just, uh, you know, use as much as I can of it. I don't keep the furs because they're just, they're young rabbits. The furs are really not good for much of anything other than like craft kind of purposes. Um, you could keep them, you could tan them out if you wanted to, but again, they're not really that useful because they don't have a good, thick, adult winter coat in. So I just, I don't mess with keeping those. Sometimes I do keep the feet and make, you know, keychains and things like that out of. Some people find that a little bit, I don't know, creepy, but uh, I figure, hey, why not put them to use? Everybody seems to enjoy them. So I do that sometimes. Uh, keep the rabbit ears for um, dehydrating to, uh, you know, use as dog, ear, or dog treats, excuse me. Um, and you know, the liver's good to eat, but I didn't mess with keeping those this time. Sometimes I do. It's just, I don't really care to freeze that. I like to use it fresh and, um, I just, I got too many things going on right now, so I just don't have time to deal with it. But anyway, got it all done down to just two rabbits. Got the mother and the father left, my buck and my doe. And, uh, we'll start breeding them again, coming up here in, oh, another month and a half, two months, probably when it starts to cool off a little bit, it's still. You know, we're coming up on fall and winter, but it's still pretty hot out. So it's still a little bit early for me to want to breed them. Um, we'll give them a little bit of a break for now and let them just uh, relax during the uh, last part of summer. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And as always, God bless.